Turn it up. Hey. Woo! You can feel the bass. Oh my days. Some I don't blow my wife's speakers out. <laughs> Chase! Dogs go anywhere. Hi, really good quality. So without further ado, people, it's time for us now to install the D Tesla head unit, which is gonna be very interesting actually. So yeah. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Carl Is On It People. Today we are doing a Tesla head unit install on the Ford Fiesta for my wife's car. This is now the 13 head unit that I'm putting on. So without further ado, I'm showing you how to basically put it on. If you want to see how to remove the head unit, go back to the previous video or the video before that. And that way it's a more detailed explanation of how to actually remove the old head unit really so uh, without further ado people we're just getting ahead i'm just trying to post that as many videos as i can there's been tons of videos that i uploaded since well tons of videos that i did since 2022 and 2023 that i didn't even get a chance to upload because of all so much has been happening in life got married and uh you know new projects have been going on i've bought quite a few cars as well sold them too so honestly people and there's new projects right now that i'm going to show you and new updates on the Mercedes and the BMW as well. So people, without further ado, enough talking and let's get straight to the action. This is the mic, 4G antenna, audio cables, brilliant tech. We've got camera as well. Probably do a future install on that. Might just do in this video, who knows. And then, last but not least, the main aim of the whole game, put this box in the The actual head unit itself, let's see what that actually looks like in the flesh. So, what do you look like? Woo! This looks... Wow! Look at that, people. Jeez! Massive Tesla screen. Gonna go in. Oh right, so that's what that's for. Okay, so that thing goes behind this. So this is gonna sit like this basically. Yeah. That's gonna sit like that. So that means I'm gonna have to disconnect the the holes from the other one to attach into this one, which is absolutely fine. I'll show you how to do that. And all the cables connections, it's got 4G, 4G plus, antenna, GPS, it's got everything. Pretty much everything you need and then this is the same plug that we connect this to so that it gets power so if you want to change the whole face of this this is probably the best one to get if, if this was damaged earlier then this would be the best replacement so it looks neat as well which is cool so let's get on with the install this will be comparison to which one takes more um, room obviously this one will be a bit more down but this is what it looks like basically from driver's side so obviously this one is more taller this one is just there but uh, yeah that's the comparison so first thing is first we need to make sure it works powers on so we're using this cable this is for the 2009 model um, if you have 2012 model it will be these cables so have this head so yeah. Also, just to mention, guys, link in the description of where to get these products from. So, first of all, let's connect this up and make sure it actually works. So, where is that box that came with the 2009? This one came with the 2009 one. So, we plug the canvas in from here, all right? Okay, and the next thing you need to do is connect this directly to the head unit. Connect this, so there's the power cable. There's all your aux auxiliary cables, your, G your antenna, 4G, GPS, and whatnot. So power goes into here, all right? And then next thing you do is connect this one to the gray plug in the car. So there's a gray plug, and then this one, this will power up the car straight away. No, sorry, power up the head unit straight away. And then also connect this little bob here, right? Connect that directly into, right into 
this one here. There we go, into that one there. That way, you should have steering wheel control, I believe. Right, it's time to connect them up and move the seat forward a bit. Okay. Right, connect it up. So there's your power plug here, into here. locks in and this one this one goes to this thing here this big gray box there there we go nice acoustic sound we click just to know that we have successfully connected it I'll find out if we still need this this box. If not, then I'll let you know. And then let me connect this as well. So there's one more as well, people. There's this one too. Connect this up with this plug here. There we go, that's all connected. All right, let's test the fan's power. First of all, keys please. you look at that the screen starts up straight away I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this look in the, the view so you've got a massive screen here Ooh, this is big essentially just wanted to test out to make sure that the head unit powers on on time and everything is working so I'm gonna do the full review after I complete the install I'm also actually gonna install a reverse camera so stay tuned for that Right, all we need to do now is transfer these two vents directly into the new head unit. So it's actually the T20 screws. I'll confirm that in just one moment when I get it. So I'm gonna unscrew them. Oh, and it is perfect. So it's... I'm just gonna unscrew them now. So you need to lift the tabs lift these tabs up before moving it that way just slide out like that and then you can from the other side it'll come out like that basically and now we can put that onto the other sides let's remove this piece as well that's off as well i can now put this away sell it if I want to or whatever now with the Tesla head unit you need to remove the CD player otherwise there won't be any space to put it in so if you do like your CDs I recommend getting the previous head unit which is the Apple CarPlay module and that way you can keep the CD functionality but if you don't need CDs then uh, yeah happy days of removing it Gonna check to see everything is still working about the main box. I believe everything still would be working naturally anyway. That's GPS cable. Make sure this is the mic. I recommend fitting on the mic to get much more crisp sound. So radio antenna people, this this blue cable goes directly to the back of this right so then that way you have radio and you connect it straight into your antenna as such now I've got radio let's put in these as well so it's gonna be the same reverse reverse process basically with these push them through the slots So we've temporarily fit this on. Let's see if it needs this box to actually work. Please, please. And it doesn't. Should you look at that? It works without this box. Let's see if steering control works. Steering control works as well, as you can see. See that? It all works, people. So there we have it. Let's now put all the connections together and get everything sorted. Let's go. Uh, 
uh, GPS cable. Then we're gonna need the extra. It also has a, a SIM card slot, so you can put, if you push this like this, right? It's easier with um, without gloves, but with your hands, it's very easy. So look, if you push this and you lift this, you can actually put a SIM card in there as well. So, and that would that would mean you have internet on board 24 seven. Reverse camera, which I'm gonna obviously install. Then that's what's gonna go into there. Actually, no, sorry, this one. So these are your USB cables. Got USB cables, two of them. One of them with the six port. The six port one is for Android Auto, right? And then the four port one is just, if you want to either connect the USB, to put music in there. You can put, you can download music directly onto the unit, but you can also put music onto a USB stick. Like, for example, like this, plug it into that. This one is a 500 gigabyte one. Um, but uh, you don't really need it. So there's that as well. Um, so let's put the USBs in. So that's like that. This one is for, if you wanna connect your microphone in there. The other ones are like audio and all that sort of stuff, but you don't really need these, this is fine. The unit has everything you would need already. So we connect this one up for audio. This connects directly to the microphone port, like this, as such. There we go, now we will have microphone access, which is good. This one is for your reverse camera. You can plug that in as well. Right people, screen is installed. Next is gonna be reverse camera time. So we've got a reverse camera that's actually a boot switch as well. So I'm gonna mount that to the boot. So what I'm gonna have to do is wire it all the way around from here, all the way through the back, all the way through here as well. They're really up to there. Take it out from there and then go into the boot. So massive job, but let's get on it. Also reverse camera has to be this brown wire here. And this one here comes up from the actual canvas box so it's one of these wires basically that's the reverse camera if you don't connect these wires you connect to any other wires it won't work so when you put it in reverse it won't show the display so make sure you get this wire connected with this one this one and those three together basically and then the rest well you'll see let's go What on earth is going on, man? What on earth? That's a very secure connection, not going anywhere. Time to seal it up with some electrical tape, and that way it's definitely not going anywhere. Right, people, side the car, right? Camera, I've done a mock wire up for it, so this is how it was meant to look when you wire it up. Obviously, this is not really connected properly, but I've just got power to it at least. Um, and then that's all the cable in, it's gonna run from there. You've seen how I've wired that bit up. So this is what will happen when you put it into reverse. Clutch down, reverse, and there we have it, look at that. So the camera is there, you see? Don't go anywhere. Hi, really good quality, really, really crisp quality. Okay, you can stop now. Nine, Nine reverse sensors. <laughs> But um, yeah, you see how that's how it works basically. So when you put it reversed, the cup quickly just comes up, comes up straight away. So that's really good, you know. So very very good quality. Gonna install that, put it back to neutral, and then it goes back to normal screen again. So we're gonna finish it up and then uh, put everything back together. So let's go. Right. It's time to now install the reverse camera. So these people, let me tell you, the Ford Fiesta is probably one of the most difficult cars. Honest to God, I'm telling you this right now. Like you have um, the brands like Audi, BMW, the premium brands like Audi, BMW, right? And you expect them to be much more difficult. I actually find them to be a lot easier than doing it for a Ford 
especially the Ford Fiesta. They have like, um, they, the way that the manufacturer designed the boots is in a way that they don't want anyone to put any wires through in any way, shape or form. That's probably the reason why they were charging Omnile to actually do a, a reverse camera install. If you were to ask the manufacturer to do an install for you for a reverse camera or for a new screen, you're looking at approximately around two grand or 1,500 around that range. Whereas for me, and this is not me throwing shade at the manufacturers, I understand why they will charge high prices. Of course, they need to pay for all their showrooms and all their shiny, you know, all the nice shiny stuff that they have out there. And uh, you know, they've got a lot of overheads on their on their head. I'm the one who's doing the job at the end of the day, so I can keep the costs lower. Also as well, the suppliers that I work with, they also provide me with a good discount too. So I also pass down those discounted prices directly with my customers too. So at the end of the day, everyone gets quality product, everyone will get quality service, and everybody's happy at the end and everybody wins. This is also put out there to other businesses or people who are looking to do sort of similar thing of what I'm doing. Um, I actually, one thing I never do or I will never stand is throwing shade at other businesses that are doing something that I do myself or for example, another business is doing. For example, if you own a restaurant, right? Or if I own the restaurant and I see another restaurant doing the same thing like if I was selling like fries and another restaurant selling fries, I wouldn't throw shade at them. That that is that is bad sportsmanship. That even for my own morals it's wrong, you know. The best thing to do is encourage them, support them. And um, at the end of the day, the Bible says whatever you reap you also sow. So I like to sow good seeds, even if someone supposedly is my competitor. I don't compete with anybody in this life. The only person I'm competing with is myself. You know, the Bible says, he that compares himself is not wise. Never compare yourself to other people in this life. You know, just stick to what you do and be the best at whatever you put yourself to do in this world. Of course, for me, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. If I was a lot younger, I would have probably chosen to do work with like cars manufacturing um, engineering mechanics all that sort of stuff it's only recently now i started going to um, electrical courses like a motor vehicle course to like learn how to um, do it safely basically um, in order to work on other people's cars so yes i had to actually get myself qualified then in fact speaking about qualified shout out to association of vehicle installers jason is an absolute legend he's helped me to learn how to do things safely how to do things properly by the book and uh, yeah it's, it's been a, it's been a good ride also another thing as well of, of working on cars too like for example the BMW that you've seen that I bought that's crash damaged go and check the link in the top right corner um, <laughs> I went to EMD literally you can just see it right in the corner of the screen Immy has been a legend, he's been patient, show me the way around how we, how to repair a broken, damaged car. And so yeah, just getting myself, just taking things more practically now, you know, take uh, and actually shadowing and seeing how it's done and how it's done properly. So yeah, full video on that BMW will be coming soon. But uh, yeah, people, let's, um, let's wrap up this install. Let's wrap up this install. I mean, if there's anything that I said in this video that was inspiring, that was helpful to you, or even the install itself, just hit that like button it's literally completely free and hit that subscribe if you haven't already and, and as always don't go anywhere honestly guys this car is one of the most difficult cars to ever do reverse camera for so if you want to attempt it i won't recommend it <laughs> unless you're you know exactly what you do if you don't know what you're doing you can mess up everything so fully recommend get a specialist or professional that knows what they're doing or if you want contact me directly on the autos i'll sort you out don't go anywhere so people tedious process had to remove a lot of things the only thing you don't need to remove you don't need to remove the actual motor for the boot so you can pop this off there's like how many screws i'll show you here look there's one one two three four five six screws that you need to do and then afterwards we can now pop this out i believe it's push i think you can push it up at this point i'm removing the boot panel trim and i'm also going to remove the boot handle so we got this is the connector we need to test which one's positive and which one's negative and then once we test which one it is then we have to hardwire again another 
hardware this positive and negative switch and uh, positive negative cable and that way the switch this micro switch would work so without further ado let's go right people that's all done now all wired up I've also put it into a negative as well so I've grounded it off all the power cables are connected seal this up also a double dual connection as well wired through and then on this side as well I've actually plugged it the butt on this bit because obviously there's no connection to go to that and we don't want any water to get into that we've also sealed up these individually crimped them sealed once and then sealed again so now they're all sealed up which is all perfect now it's time to cover it up and basically get it all back into original shape so without further ado let's go now we're finally at the final stage which is now to put everything back together put it all the way back to manufacture standards bolt everything back up and make everything look tidy again like as if nothing happened People, one thing I found as well, with this car, when we bought it, the actual boot button wasn't opening. Now, now it opens, listen, see, why? So we've even repaired the boot button as well, as well as upgraded it with reverse camera. So let's finish up the job. It's so nice to do upgrades on a car. And whilst you're doing the upgrade, you're actually fixing previous issues as well. So it's like a win-win situation. So yeah, now the job is complete and I'm happy. And there we have it people, this unit is fully loaded, looks absolutely beautiful as well, massive screen and also it's also in line as well with the steering wheel, so it's nothing higher than the steering wheel obviously, um, the other one is a bit higher, it's like a bit this much higher, so anytime you're thinking that the height would be an issue then this would be the best one to go for if you're if you have like a low seating position, so yeah I recommend this one if you, if you're worried about having something in your front um, but yeah you can see how many features it has as well you have so many apps you can download and you can also download more going to um, Google Chrome so how do you get to internet you basically go on to settings then you go on to Android settings go and then click go to settings these these buttons they all work if you have a sync Ford Fiesta so that's like for the newer models the 2013 um, 2015 models basically 2013 to like 2017 I believe so yeah anyway let's get back to it so you click on network and internet you click on Wi-Fi you can connect to your hotspot um, onto um, to hotspot your phone directly into the actual head unit as well so that's you've got that option as well let's go back and back again you've also as well right if you don't have so Anytime you open a door, right, sometimes it'll show if it's the opposite way. This is the way to change that, right? So obviously this is the right side door, but it's usually set on to the left side. If you open the right side, it'll open the left side. So that is um, is with the, because these are for the European models, which everything's on the left-hand side, basically, and US as well. So to change that, you go to factory settings, put code 8888. And then from there you can, if you want steering wheels controls to work like this now, you can see if I increase the volume, increases and it also decreases. And also you can also change the music as well, change change tracks, change whatever. Um, and uh, to do that, you go to camber settings, make sure it's set on Ford, and then you also select the model it's on as well. Before you do that though, make sure, make sure, make sure you're connected to the internet. So as I said before, connect to your phone hotspot or if you're next to your house, you can connect to your Wi-Fi and then make sure you hit, um, you choose the model. So it has to be first connected to the internet, then you choose the model forward and then choose the year or whatnot and then hit update. After you hit update, hit confirm and then that should be, that should get it all set. So we'll go back from there. So in order to change those other settings, for example, like mileage, uh, it can show like kilometers and all that sort of thing, right? This is what you do. You go into um, protocol parameter settings, which is just basic canvas parameter settings, right? So the door one is here, door swap. 
exactly so i'll show you now what i meant so look it's naturally set on like this so like, if i open the driver's side door it thinks it's the passenger side that's open so to change that you click on door information swap click left to right you confirm and then now watch now open the driver's side door and there we have it it shows the driver's side which is perfect and then also as well you've got um there's lots of different settings you can do including the mileage one as well temperature um if you want to do the mileage one right for example you go back you go into car settings click setting to car click set then there is mileage unit you can put kilometers and then that changes to kilometers 121,000 you click a mileage unit click miles and it's now 75,000 miles so you can also change the mileage as well so those are the main things that you can do there's all these different settings that you can do so if you also have the um, the titanium package so that's the one that has is fully loaded you'll be able to use a lot of these settings as well that are from factory and also additional ones and hidden features that you wouldn't have been able to do from your from the car so you've got that as well it's also got Apple CarPlay as well so if I click on to Z-Link this is Apple CarPlay if I connect my Bluetooth I'll show you in a second so if you want to connect to your to Apple CarPlay make sure right the hotspot is on for the head unit and then you connect go to your Wi-Fi and look for like Android AP and then you can click on that and then that way that will connect directly to the car's hotspot and then Apple CarPlay will now connect directly with your phone. I mean, the, the Android will connect directly with your phone and you have everything basically. You have your maps, location, everything like that, Waze, whatever apps that you, you've downloaded from your phone, including Spotify as well, will also show onto the screen too as well. So yeah, I gotta charge my phone currently using it. So I gotta get that charged. But yeah, it's fully loaded. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. You can connect with your Android Auto, your phone, with your Android phone and it'll be similar, but it'll be a different interface than Apple CarPlay for more people who have an iPhone. So there's that as well. There's a lot more settings you can do as well. Your brightness, you can change how light you want the your screen to go on. Um, for example, right now, as I turned the lights on, you can see that the color changes as well because I put on eye protection mode and it reduced the brightness. So the moment I switch the lights off, the screen becomes a lot brighter. I set in the settings the moment I put it on, it dims automatically, which is perfect. So I've got that as well set too. So there's so many different settings you can set on there. Um, yeah, you've also got DSP as well for music too, which I'll show you in the end. But yeah. Also, if you want to make things more clearer, right? So it's naturally like this, which is a bit faint. If you click on high contrast text, it then makes all the text contrast properly so that way it's much more clearer you know and then that we can click back I've also set the Ford logo as well some of you guys are probably wondering how did you get this logo how did you go go about getting this logo so basically go to you go to, you have to set your internet on let me set it now and I'll get back to you in a sec right so I've connected my hotspot I've connected my phone directly to the head unit then you go into Chrome, and then you basically put in Ford logo, Android, and then you find one with the clearest resolution, and you download the image. So I chose this one basically to have a, a clear background, and also I chose another one as well on, on Google here. It's on a Pinterest, there's a Pinterest image that I downloaded basically, and I'll show you what to do, so. Now it depends which model you have. I mean, it might be possibly by the time you get this unit, it might be an upgraded version of this. Then you go to car settings, scroll down all the way to logo settings. If for any reason your head unit is probably crashing or something, right? And you just want to reset it or you've done something, you've updated something, you want to reset it. Click, go to factory settings, click put 888 and then click on reboot. And then that reboot. I've also set my logo settings as well and that will show when it starts up in a second look at that i've got it to boot with the ford logo so you can also set that as well and i'll show that show you how to do that in a second so what you do right you go into logo settings click on logo select then click on pictures because wherever you download it it will either go to pictures or it'll go to downloads 
So it's on my download and you can select whichever one you want and you hit okay and it goes from there. As you saw it, it pulls up the the um, different logo and you can download any sort of background that you want. I just wanted this one to have it like an OEM plus look. So there we have it people, that is that. If you got any more questions, um, hit me in the comments down below. Also, let me show you the sound, how the sound works as well. I might as well hit that whilst we're here. This thing has also got DSP, so you can increase the bass for your music as well. And that will give it such better clarity as such. So I've adjusted it already. And then we're gonna go from there. So we're gonna hit it up, go straight to the YouTube. Don't go anywhere. And we're gonna hit this up. Eesh. Don't go, don't go, don't go anywhere. Eesh. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Mm -hmm. Eesh. Eesh. Turn it up. Eesh. Woo! You can feel the bass. Oh my days. I hope I don't blow my wife's speakers out. <laughs> Jeez, people. That is the end of the video. If you need a head unit install, let me load that a bit. If you need a head unit install for any car, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Vauxhall, Ford, any single car you have, Audi, let me know. Contact me. On the Autos has got you covered as always. And as always, don't go anywhere. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Shandola, Shan, 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 Shan,